Very good evening, folks. Tonight we're going to be talking about uh, Melchizedek. Uh, he's the king of Salem. He's the priest of the Most High God. He met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and he blessed him. And Abraham, if you remember, when seeing Melchizedek, did not in any way feel threatened by his presence. And as uh, as as it has been through the ages with the various manifestations of God. Needless to say, Melchizedek is also uh, mentioned in the book of Psalms. Uh, and David says that uh, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now we know that the lamb was slain from before the foundation of the world and that eventually Melchizedek had to not just uh, re reveal himself to Abraham but eventually Melchizedek had to offer uh, a sacrifice, a better sacrifice than the Old Testament. So we're going to look at Melchizedek in the Old Testament, and then we'll look at him in the New Testament. So in the Old Testament, he hadn't yet shed his blood. The Old Testament saint, if you remember, was in paradise, and he's awaiting. He's waiting to get brought into God's heavenly domain. Uh, and he's waiting there. He's not suffering, you know, uh, judgment for judgment of sin or anything of that nature. He's, he's totally justified, but we got to bear in mind that the blood of bulls and goats can never take away sin, that he's awaiting for the precious blood of Christ to be to purge the heavenly tabernacle, as noted in the book of Hebrews, and that he, they're waiting for captivity to be led captive and to be brought into that domain. So Melchizedek of the Old Testament had obviously not come into flesh yet, He's, he foreshadows Christ, and he foreshadows the fact that God demands death for sin, judgment for sin, blood for sin. He foreshadows the fact that in eternity past, God understood that through predestination, through foreknowledge, that man would sin, and that God had to make preparation or provision to deal with those sins, as expressed through Melchizedek, the blood that would be shed, and him offering himself as the Lamb of God. That was predestined from before the foundation of the world. That's the Melchizedek of the Old Testament. Until he comes in the flesh, those Old Testament saints are sitting there waiting. Although once he has come in the flesh, and he's been resurrected, and he applies the blood in the heavenly tabernacle, and purges that heavenly tabernacle, he can now bring those Old Testament saints and lead captivity captive and bring them right into his domain. So when Christ comes as Melchizedek here, uh, Paul notes in Hebrews chapter 7, for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning, or returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of Salem which is king of peace without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the Son of God abide the priest continually so he's made like unto the Son of God there's a point in time when he is uh, brought forward to assume a place or role as a priest. Uh, this language later on in the, uh, gets, uh, gets uh, referred to as and, and used under the text of Psalm 2, This day have I begotten thee. He's brought forward to assume a place or role. But he had no beginning. His goings forth were from of old, from everlasting. Uh, there's, but he comes in time or in a place where he assumes a role, in this case, as, Melchiz as Melchizedek. Now he says, now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And verily they that are the sons of Levi who receive the office of the priesthood have a command to take tithes of the, of the people according to the law. That is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. So this Melchizedek uh, eventually 
applied his blood in the heavenly tabernacle. You see later on in the book of Hebrews chapter 9. Uh, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no remission. There is no remission. And he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So the Old Testament Melchizedek is, is the same person, it's just that the blood had not been shed yet. So we have the contrast of the two testaments, the Old Testament under the law, where the blood of bulls and goats couldn't take away sin, it merely allowed a separation to take effect where God could take the righteous and put them in a domain, awaiting for the day when Melchizedek would emerge to apply his own sinless blood in the heavenly tabernacle, now to allow those saints to be removed from that domain and then brought into that new heavenly domain. So I hope that helped bridge a couple of things related to Melchizedek of the Old Testament, understanding he is the same Melchizedek of the New Testament, only the work had not been yet fulfilled, and also understanding that he was brought forward to assume that place and rule, but as the scriptures state, his goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting.